Let's dive deep into the King's Gambit accepted variation. And today we are going to specifically look at some of the lines in the King's Knight Gambit. White plays Knight to F3 over here. We call this as the King's Knight Gambit. So the idea of playing this move is that since this diagonal has been weakened and there are chances that this Black Queen might jump on this square, so White is playing Knight to F3 in order to stop Black Queen coming over to the H4 square. But Black here is very keen to exploit this weakened diagonal. That is why most likely he will play g5. The idea is that now he is threatening to push this pawn ahead in order to attack this knight and after knight moves, he will bring his queen to the h4 square in order to attack white's king. So if white is not cautious over here and plays a generic move like a3, then black will play g4 attacking white's knight, knight will move to e5 double attacking this pawn but it doesn't really help because black will now play the crushing queen h4 check. If the king moves, then white is losing quickly to d6. Not only is this move attacking this knight, but is also opening up lines for this light squared bishop. Knight moves to c4 and now f3 check, king moves to d3. And the white's king over here is in a very odd position and is highly vulnerable to attack by black's pieces. And this game is not good for white. So therefore, White will most likely here try to block this check with the move g3 but even that doesn't help because black will capture this pawn and you can capture back otherwise you will lose this rook. So therefore white will capture the g4 pawn with his queen and attacks black queen but that doesn't save white's game either because black can now play the crushing g2 check forking white's pieces as well as revealing a discovered check on white's king. If you capture the queen, then black will capture your rook and promote his pawn into a queen. White has lost a rook for nothing and this game is completely losing for white. Therefore, after the move g5, you can try to play h4 over here. The idea is that you are now attacking this pawn as well as you are occupying this important h4 square with your pawn which is protected by this rook over here. If black protects his pawn with the move h6 then that is completely losing because after pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, black will lose his rook. Let's go back and if black tries to save this pawn with the move f6 then you can do a shocking sacrifice here with the move knight takes pawn. The idea behind the sacrifice is that you are clearing up this diagonal for your queen to jump on this h5 square and attack black's king. So if black doesn't understand this idea and captures your knight then he's gone. Now you can attack black's king with queen h5 check, king moves to e7 and now queen takes g5 check. And here the only good option for black is to block this check with knight to f6 because if he takes back his king, then you can fork black's pieces with queen e5 check. Black will block the check and now black loses the rook. Let's go back. And if here the king moves to this square, then he will lose the queen. If he comes to either this or this square, then again he is losing the queen. So the only best move for black here is to block this check with the move knight to f6. But now you can attack this pinned knight with your pawn. So e5. King will move to f7 in order to unpin this knight. But now you can develop another piece and that is your queen side knight. So knight to c3. Well there is no hurry in capturing this knight because this queen over here is unprotected and this knight is still pinned. So knight to c3. And now black will play rook to g8 attacking your queen but you will capture the f4 pawn. He will play rook to g4 attacking your queen one more time. But now you will bring another piece attacking black's king and that is bishop c4 check. King moves to e8 and now queen moves to f3. Well you are allowing black to capture this free bishop over here. But that's not for free because we are laying a trap over here. So if rook captures bishop then pawn captures knight. Black plays d5 over here, protecting the rook as well as opening up lines for his bishop. Then he's gone because now you can play queen h5 check. King moves to d7. Now queen takes d5 check for king black's pieces. King moves to e8. And now there is no hurry in capturing this rook because we can check black king one more time and can force him to come out on the board before we capture this rook. So let's see how we can do that. We can first play queen h5 check again, king moves to d7 and now queen f7 check. 
we are four king black pieces again but now king is forced to move out on the board because if he blocks the check with any of his pieces then he is losing if he plays king to d6 then queen d5 is a checkmate let's go back if he blocks a check with bishop then you can build up more pressure on the black king by castling king side you are activating your rook over here who is soon going to join you to this attack party let's go back and if king moves to c6 then you can capture this rook with a check again and here the condition of the black player is very bad because there is no hope left for him to save his game he is down in material by 5 points and his king is wide open vulnerable to white's deadly attack let's look at another line in the same variation so after you attack the pawn with h4 black will not defend with these pawns he might just directly push the pawn to g4 attacking your knight then what do you play here then you can move your knight to e5 double attacking this pawn and if he protects his pawn with knight to f6 then do not make the mistake of capturing this pawn because if you do capture this pawn assuming that he will capture back your knight and then you will capture back with your queen and then he will attack your queen and then you just capture this free pawn and things look very normal over here but that's not what he's going to play because after you capture this pawn with your knight over here he isn't going to capture back with his knight because after all the exchanges the game would turn equal so instead of capturing this knight he might capture this pawn over here so he might play knight takes e4 and now after d3 attacking the knight the knight can now come to a very annoying place in your territory and that is knight to g3 forking your pieces now you have to move the rook and now he will check your king with his queen you cannot block this check by getting your pieces on these squares because both these squares are controlled by black's pieces so you will have to move your king to the f2 square losing your castling rights and black is now up in material by one point and your king is badly placed over here your pieces are kind of stuck in an odd position and this is not what you are looking for when you play the king's gambit so therefore capturing this pawn with your knight is not a good idea so what should white play here well here you can try to put more pressure on your opponent with the move bishop to c4 because now you are putting a lot of pressure on this weak f7 pawn he will block your attack with d5 attacking your bishop you can simply capture this pawn and now he doesn't want this pawn to advance further so he will block the advance of this pawn with the move bishop to d6 pawn cannot move further and now this bishop is attacking your knight you can protect it with the move d4 also opening up discovered attack to this pawn over here he will likely castle and now you can capture this pawn he will attack your bishop with his knight and you can simply protect your bishop with g3 and here you have reached a position where you are a pawn up and the position is largely equal let's go back so here in this situation after you attack this pawn with knight to e5 instead of protecting this pawn with knight f6 black can also try to play queen to e7 attacking your knight the pawn as well as getting his queen lined up in the same file as your king and now you cannot capture this pawn because if you do then black can play the crushing f5 attacking both of these pieces you will have to move your knight to the f2 square and now pawn takes pawn and queen h5 check king moves to d8 and you have reached a position where black has an advantage in the game because he has strong center pawns that are controlling key squares in your territory therefore when the black queen attacks your knight instead of capturing this pawn you should focus on opening up lines for your pieces and developing your pieces so that is why d4 is a better move over here protecting this as well as opening up line for your bishop to attack this pawn he will attack your knight with d6 also opening up his line for his bishop and now you can play knight takes g4 and he'll play queen takes e4 check queen moves to e2 pinning opponent's queen to his king queen moves back and now queen captures queen bishop captures queen because this knight is under attack it moves to the f2 square and now knight to c6 attacking our center pawn you protect it with c3 f3 attacking our pawn bishop to e3 developing a piece pawn takes pawn bishop takes pawn and you've reached a position where there are equal chances for both black and white to win this game
although black has some advantage because he is a pawn up in this situation let's look at another interesting line so after you attack this pawn black might not push this pawn further but rather attack your center with d5 so here you can capture this pawn and now if he attacks your knight then you can move your knight to the e5 square he will likely try to pin your knight to your king but then you can simply protect it with d4 also opening up lines for this bishop now obviously you are thinking that we are giving up a piece over here because black can simply attack this pinned knight with the move f6 but here we have some interesting moves because now you can play bishop takes f4 he'll play pawn takes knight and now bishop takes pawn attacking the rook although this bishop is pinned to the king but it's just a temporary because he will likely try to attack your bishop with his knight and now you can pin this knight with your bishop he will unpin the knight with c6 but now you can attack his queen with the move d6 queen moves to e6 and now bishop moves to c4 attacking the queen yes we are giving a free piece because if the queen captures this piece then we are going to capture this rook over here so queen takes bishop bishop takes rook bishop takes pawn and now the material is equal queen takes g4 we are up a pawn again and now knight d to f6 attacking the queen but you can attack opponent's knight with knight to d2 knight takes queen knight takes queen bishop g3 check king moves to d2 bishop to e6 attacking our knight and knight moves to e5 attacking opponent's knight and here we have reached a position where white is up in pawn but black has a slight advantage in the game because it's an open position and black has a pair of bishops another interesting line in the king's knight gambit is not playing the h4 but rather focusing on developing your pieces by playing knight to c3 and here black might play g4 and you move your knight to e5 and now black attacks the center with d5 and now here do not make the mistake of capturing this pawn because if you do then you will land up in trouble because black can now play queen h4 check you block the check with g3 but now f takes g3 threatening to fork black's pieces while revealing a discovered attack so king moves to e2 and now queen moves to f6 attacking your knight you protect it with d4 but queen f2 check is crushing king moves to d3 and now bishop f5 check knight blocks the check and now black attacks with another piece putting a lot of pressure over here so white defends it with its queen but now bishop takes e4 check king moves to d2 and now queen takes d4 check four king pieces one more time white blocks the check with his knight and now queen takes d5 black here is considerably up in material and therefore he is completely winning in this situation so therefore capturing that pawn in the center is not a good idea instead what you should try over here is play queen to e2 so you are getting your queen in the same file as of the opponent's king and now here if pawn takes pawn then you can capture back with your queen threatening to reveal discovered attack with a check to the black's king black will attack your queen and you can simply capture this pawn and here we have reached a situation where the material is equal and both white and black have equal chances in the game let's go back a few moves so here in this situation instead of capturing this pawn black can also play d4 attacking your knight so what do you do then so you simply move your knight to d5 and now knight f6 putting more pressure on that centralized knight you move your other knight back to d3 and now knight to c6 developing another piece and now knight takes f4 bishop to g7 preparing to castle now knight takes f6 check queen takes f6 and now d3 protecting our knight and black might here play h5 in order to guard this pawn over here and you can simply focus on developing your other pieces like bishop to d2 knight to b4 It's attacking and threatening to fork white's pieces but you can simply save with queen to d1 and now bishop d7 is preparing to castle on the other side of the board g3 protecting our knight h4 attacking the protector of our knight bishop takes knight pawn takes pawn queen to d2 providing protection black castles queen side and we develop our other bishop rook takes h2 and we castle on the queen side too and here we have reached a position where white is up in material by one point and the position is almost equal and both black as well as white have equal chances of winning this game
let's look at another interesting line. So here instead of playing the g5 move, black might play d6 and the idea is he's opening up line for his bishop but most importantly he's controlling this important e5 square where you have usually seen this knight jumping onto. So in that case you can simply focus on developing your pieces, trying to put more pressure on this pawn and then followed by inside castling, the rook will come over here, the queen can come to this square, the knight can move over here and basically slowly and steadily you can try to put pressure on this semi open file and more importantly on this f7 pawn over here. Another way of playing this line is that you can try to take full control of the center with the move d4. Black will play g5 and now you play h4 attacking the pawn, he plays g4 attacking your knight and the knight moves back and now the knight cannot jump on this square. So you can move back your knight to the g1 square, bishop to h6 protecting this pawn over here and now you can focus on developing other pieces like knight to c3, knight c6, bishop b5 pinning the knight, he attacks your bishop, you move back, he unpins the knight, you develop your other knight putting more pressure on this pawn and now f3 and here instead of moving your knight anywhere else you can just simply capture this bishop and the best move for black over here is to capture this pawn attacking the rook as well as threatening to get a queen on the board so rook moves to h2 and now he promotes his pawn into a queen knight takes queen knight takes bishop and now knight moves to d5 centralizing your knight rook moves to f8 queen to e2 getting it in the same file as the opponent's king knight to g8 e5 trying to open up this line but bishop to e6 blocking this file and attacking our knight and now knight b4 double attacking this pinned piece over here he'll play knight to e7 in order to protect it and now queenside castling and b5 attacking our bishop as well as this knight over here so knight takes knight attacking the queen and knight takes knight bishop moves to b3 d5 here we have come to a situation where black is technically up a pawn but both the players have equal chances in the game and now it's time for the question of the day here white captures black rook but that's a mistake because white will now get checkmated soon so can you find out all the checkmating moves let me know your answers in the comments box and i'll see you in the next video